we will have a quick review on the shear force and bending moment so what actually is the shear force and bending moment shear force at any section of a beam is defined as the algebraic sum of forces on left or right side of the section okay and bending moment at any section is defined as algebraic sum of moment on left or right side of the section okay so if you if you want to determine the shear force at any section just take the unbalanced vertical force on either left or right side of the section and if you want to determine bending moment at any section just take the unbalanced bending moment either on left or right side of the section okay so these are shear force and bending moment okay now the sign convention for shear force and bending moment okay we take the sign convention as of shear force as run run means right side upward is negative and accordingly we can get the sign convention right side upward is negative that means right side downward will be positive left side upward will be positive and left side downward will be negative okay bending moment if we have a sagging bending moment sagging bending moment means the beam is tend to be smiling okay jab smiling face mein rahegi beam then we take the bending moment sign as positive this is positive bending okay aur jab hogging beam rahegi okay or crying face then we take the bending moment sign as negative okay so these are the sign convention of shear force and bending moment what are shear force diagram and bending moment diagram this is just the graphical representation of variation of shear force and bending moment along the length of the beam okay so when we represent the uh, shear force and bending moment at every section in the form of a graph then we get the shear force and bending moment diagram okay so we have a certain relation between uh, loading shear force and bending moment okay first relation is shear force f is equal to dm by dx okay magnitude of loading w is equal to df by dx or we can say w is equal to d2m by dx square okay certain conclusion we can draw from here okay w is df by dx that means slope of shear force diagram gives loading okay similarly slope of bending moment diagram gives shear force okay dm by dx is nothing but f into dx okay and when we when we take it dm is equal to fdx and when we integrate this when this is integrated between two points okay we will get the area under shear force diagram between two points is equal to the change in bending moment between those two points okay so if you want to determine the change in moment between two points just take the area under shear force diagram between those two points okay now we will see the shear force and bending moment diagram of certain cases first is the simply supported beam which is carrying a point load at mid span okay what to do for determining the shear force at any point if you want to determine shear force at any point just consider either left or right side of that section okay ya to pura left consider kar le ya to pura right consider kar le if we consider left we will get at this point the shear force will be w by 2 the reactions will be w by 2 and w by 2 okay so this is a symmetrical load and reaction will be distributed among the two supports okay aur uska magnitude hoga w by 2 and w by 2 ra and rb both will be equal to w by 2 okay so point a pe variation ho raha hai from 0 to plus w by 2 then it remains constant up to point c okay point c pe drop ho raha hai of magnitude w okay whenever there is sudden drop in shear force diagram this shows this shows that there is a point load in the loading diagram okay and then from point c to b no variation in loading constant shear force and then at point b again zero so this is the shear force diagram of this case okay bending moment diagram is just 1 degree higher of shear force diagram this shear force diagram is of degree x to the power 0 okay so we will get the bending moment as x to the power 1 that means a linear line okay so we have the linear line the bending moment at ends of the 
simply supported beam is zero okay first thing second thing bending moment will be maximum where shear force is zero so shear force is zero at point c bending moment will be maximum at this point and if you want to get the bending moment at this point just take the area between a and c okay so we will get the area between a and c mc minus ma will be equal to w by 2 into l by 2 which is equal to wl by 4 and we know m at a is already equal to 0 okay so we will get m max mc which is equal to wl by 4 okay so this is the way to plot the shear force and bending moment diagram okay maximum bending moment is is at center and which is wl by 4 okay next is the case for udl udl is already x to the power 0 loading okay so sfd will be first degree x to the power 1 key loading x to the power 1 ka curve and bmd will be a second degree parabola okay reactions will be half half wl by 2 and w by 2 wl by 2 okay and at center the shear force will be zero and when the shear force is zero at the center but the bending moment at the same point will be maximum and the magnitude of this bending moment is equal to w l square by 8 and we will get the second degree parabola and points moment will be zero because this is simply supported beam. okay next is a sim simply supported beam subjected to a couple okay so when we have the couple at uh, a concentrated moment at any point in between the simply supported beam suppose at a distance a from n a okay we will get the reaction as m naught by l as shown here at this point at point m c minus suppose this point is c at point m c minus this bending moment will be equal to m naught into a by l okay and at point m c plus this bending moment will be equal to m naught into b by l okay so if we want to determine the maximum moment okay just take the maximum out of a and b okay suppose in this case the uh, a is greater than b then the maximum moment will be m naught into a by l okay first thing second thing uh, when whenever we have a concentrated moment at that point okay we will have a vertical ordinate in the bending moment diagram as can be seen here okay so we have a vertical ordinate here whose magnitude is equal to the length of the ordinate length of the of that ordinate is equal to the magnitude of that concentrated moment okay next is the case for pure bending okay so you can see the case for pure bending the reactions in this case will be zero shear force will be a zero line okay no shear force at any point and bending moment will be maximum and will be equal to m so this is the case for pure bending no shear force bending moment constant and maximum okay so there next there are certain areas we will have the centroid and area of uh, certain figures okay first is rectangle area is b into h as we all know okay and centroid is at a distance d by 2 similarly for the triangle area is equal to half b into h and centroid x bar okay see this x bar this x bar will be equal to 1 by 3 of b and if we take from this end this will be equal to 2 by 3 of b okay next certain curves we have if, if we have the second degree parabola okay so uh, we have two types of second degree parabola in the first type you can see here the area is 2 by 3 of b into h okay and x bar this distance x bar is equal to 3 by 8 of b okay and in, in this second type of the second degree parabola both are second degree parabola this is also a second degree parabola okay and we have the area as 1 by 3 bh okay and x bar see the distance from here from this end from this end the distance x bar is equal to 3 by 4 of b okay so these are certain curves and its areas okay next is the case for cantilever beam first is cantilever beam subjected to point load at end at free end okay we will have a shear force diagram as a rectangle whose magnitude is equal to w okay and bending moment diagram will be a triangle 
maximum bending moment will be at fixed end and the magnitude of that bending moment is equal to W into L. Okay. Next is cantilever beam subjected to UDL. So we have this cantilever beam which is subjected to UDL of W per unit length. Okay. And we will have a shear force diagram as a triangle as shown in figure having 0 at free end and maximum at fixed end. And maximum magnitude of the shear force will be equal to W into L equal to total load of that UDL. Okay. And this bending moment diagram will be a second degree parabola okay, which is convex from upside and the maximum moment will occur at fixed end and will be equal to WL square by 2. Okay. Next is cantilever beam subjected to moment at end. This is again a case of pure bending. Okay. Simply a moment is acting at the free end. The shear force at every point will equal to 0. Okay, and bending moment will be maximum and constant which is equal to M. Okay. Next is the case of UVL uniformly varying load that is triangular loading. So first is the triangular loading with maximum load of W per unit length at fixed end and 0 at the free end. Okay. So this is the loading of x to the power 1. We will have the shear force diagram 1 degree higher second degree parabola. Okay, we will have second degree parabola. Maximum shear force will be at fixed end and that will be equal to WL by 2. Okay, bending moment is a third degree parabola, 0 at free end and maximum at fixed end and will be equal to WL square by 6. Okay, next is again the UVL, a triangular load having maximum magnitude of W per unit length at free end and 0 at fixed end. So we will have a second degree parabola as the shear force diagram. The maximum value of the shear force diagram will be WL by 2. Okay. And bending one diagram will be a third degree parabola whose maximum value is WL square by 6. Okay. Next is the case for overhanging beam which are used to reduce the maximum bending moment diagram sorry reduce which are used to reduce maximum bending moment first is the case when 25 percent of the beam is overhanged on both that means a is equal to l by 4 in this case shear force diagram will be like this at center at mid span shear force will be zero as well as bending moment will also be equal to zero this is the case when A is equal to L by 4. Okay. And this point is known as the point of inflection. The point where bending moment becomes 0 is known as the point of inflection. Okay. Next, when A is greater than L by 4, 4, we will have the bending moment diagram like this as shown in figure. Next, when A is less than L by 4, we will have the bending moment like diagram like this. Okay. So this is the point of inflection as well as the point of contraflexor. Okay. How can we define the point of contraflexor? Point of contraflexor is dead point where bending moment changes sign. Okay. So there is a difference between point of inflection and point of contraflexor. All that point where bending moment becomes zero is a point of inflection, but the points where bending moment changes sign is known as a point of inflection. Okay, so this is the case when A is less than L by 4. So this is the best case for designing as moment is distributed on both sides positive as well as the negative side. Okay, and to have the best design, to have the best design, it is necessary that the positive maximum bending moment should be equal to negative maximum bending moment or we can say maximum magnitude of hogging bending moment should be equal to maximum magnitude of sagging bending moment. And when we equate this, the maximum value of hogging bending moment is equal to maximum bending of sagging bending moment. When we do this, we, will, we get the value of A which is equal to 0 0.207 of L. Okay, So this is a standard value and this is the optimum value of overhang. Next is Two nine three of L. Again, beam with two overhang 
is much better than beam with one overhang for design point of view okay next point of contra flexor and point of inflection as we have seen point of inflection a point where bending moment becomes zero okay every point where bending moment becomes zero it is not necessary that bending moment changes sign and what is point of contra flexor point where bending moment changes sign and while changing sign bending moment becomes zero is known as the point of contra flexor okay and all point of contra flexor are point of inflection but all point of inflection are not point of contra flexor 